Hey guys, this is Drew with Future Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're at the shirt show. This is the second show we've been to this weekend, which is cool because we get to go to two different places, two different amount of dealers, two different amount of great things we can buy. The first thing that we bought at the show is this $500 bill, TMG35 EPQ. So, definitely, uh, we don't pick up too much paper, but when the price is right, you need to buy it. It's EPQ, it's dark green, which is nice as well. And uh, yeah, let's show you guys some more of the shirt show. So as you guys can see, we were at the shirt show this weekend. We had a really fun time. We sat down with Sam. Sam's an awesome guy. Sam served our country. And Sam knows how to pick out coins that are really nice. You're about to see some of those, which are pretty cool. A lot of Franklins and a few other modern coins. But we want to talk to you a little bit about what you shouldn't do at coin shows. And we're not going to talk about the collector side of things. We're going to be talking about the dealer side of things. The dealer side of things, sometimes a little bit more tricky because when you're buying and selling, you want coins or paper for a certain price. And the way that we ran into this $500 bill that we have on screen is that there was a dealer at the show that was set up, and when the dealer was set up, the guy was walking around, and he was offering this $500 bill, and he went to the first table that he found, and he said, hey, what will you offer for this bill? And green sheet for this bill is $1,750, and the guy ended up offering him, that was set up, $1,400 for this piece of paper. And to you and to me, that seems like that's not really a good price, and that's something that really wasn't fair for that item and the reason being is because the market is demanding three or four hundred dollars over green sheet pricing of 1750 and so Casey was walking around I was walking around we were doing two separate things and he ended up finding this guy in the crowd we were set up there with royal coins thankfully and we were able to sit down with him and talk with him about what he wanted for the bill and when we talked to him about what he wanted for the bill, it was fair for both parties as it relates to the market, and we ended up striking a deal. The thing that you shouldn't do at coin shows when you're set up is don't get greedy. What getting greedy means is that, yes, you have overhead, yes, you have expenses, yes, you have a lot of things to do, but the ultimate treasure is having that client in the future. So, so what we did at the Houston show and that ended up doing it at the Beaumont show, there was a guy walking around the Houston show, and he was selling a toned Carson City Morgan dollar. Everybody was offering him whatever white uh, Carson City Morgan dollars were selling for, and I offered him like 100 or $150 more than what anybody offered him in the whole entire room. He took the offer. We made like $50 on the coin, and not a lot of money, but I knew that if he ever saw us again, he would want to offer us coins. Fast forward to the Beaumont show that happened this weekend. He was walking around with a 16D Mercury Dime, and I forgot the other coin. But both of those coins, he knew he would get the best price from us. So he only went to one other dealer in the show, and then he saw us, and he came right to us. Sometimes what people miss is the future coins they can purchase from a collector that when they want to liquidate them. And so what I would recommend to dealers today and to people today that want to get good pieces is that you have to pay for them and you can't be greedy. And being greedy sometimes will cost you not only the client, but the future things that they can offer you as a coin dealer. So we offered a fair amount for the $500 bill, and the next time we see him, I'm guessing he's going to have a few other pieces that are going to get us even more money in profit and also offer cool coins, maybe paper money to you guys on AcousticCollectibles.com. But... Other than that, we had a really good time, and we had Blake there from Royal Coins. We also had Keith there, and uh, yeah, they're just really good guys. We had a good time because Fernando, who was running the show, also knows how to put on a great show. Is not too lax, but is pretty fair with what he does in terms of letting dealers do what they want to do and let people you know, go around the show asking for what they need help with. Some dealers at, at some shows, when they set them up, can be a little bit of sticklers and people that are there for a money grab. But I think Fernando was a real treat to work with and be able to get to know. And so let's show you guys these new purchases that we ended up picking up from Sam and the people at the show. We hope you guys enjoy them. All right, guys, the first thing we want to show you is this $500 bill. 
It's FR2201. It's graded PMG35 EPQ. Very fine. Definitely a really nice bill here. And I think I said PPQ. It's actually EPQ. So it's kind of different between PCGS and PMG, but PMG does hold most of the market value um, currently. And so definitely a neat bill. Probably came out of an old collection. But let's move over to the coins. We got some coins here we want to show you. These were all from Sam. Sam ended up sending these coins in kind of a list to us, and then we were able to look at them at the show. All really nice in PQ coins. Uh, you know, when you take a look, just nice luster on the coins. Very flashy. No distracting spots. And these coins photo well. So when we were talking about coins in previous videos, you know, you want coins that photo well, that have a little bit of a charm to it. And some of these are cameo. Some of these are, are uh, you know, just regular proofs. And, uh, yeah, definitely some neat coins. When you're looking at cameos, you kind of want the the Franklin to be jumping out at you. You see that kind of whiteness to the, the cameo of this 1956. You see how it kind of is distinguished between the bust and the fields. Well, that's a cameo. It's going to be the same on the reverse. So when you look at this 1955, you see how that bust is not jumping out at you. That's what I would say the biggest determiner of cameo is to me. And uh, that's kind of what a lot of these coins will look like to you. We got another 1956 Type 2 Proof Franklin. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick break in today's video to show you guys the immense support we've had recently on our website, AcousticCollectibles.com. We had, I think, 47, 48 orders from Thursday all the way to Sunday night. And so it's been just overwhelming. Thank you guys so much for all that you do. If you guys ever want to check out the cool things that we pick up, Make sure to check out AcousticCollectibles.com. Let's get back to today's video. Just some neat coins, some things that we could show you guys on our website. Here's this really nice high gray 1957 proof Franklin. A lot of these are a little bit in the older holders, so there's a few scuffs here and there on them, but once again, Sam knew what he was doing when he was picking them out. We have a few other nice Franklins to show you guys. So a few cameo coins. 1962, 1962 and proof 68. We have this 1960 and proof 67 cameo. And something that's cool is that he said, hey, th these are all my extra coins and I wanted to sell them to you. So he does have a pretty nice set of Franklins and other coins that he might want to show us one day. And so being able to just see what he buys as extras is pretty cool because... He's very uh, kind of choosy when he goes to buy some coins. And uh, when you're taking a look at these, you can see very little spots. The coins are just really nice and would fit in any Franklin collection. And we're going to finish it off with the 63 cameo. And just let, look how nice these coins are. They are pretty abundant in terms of them being in the marketplace, but I do like how they're photoed, and I do like the look of the coin. It does have a lot of eye appeal to it. And here's a nice 1939D, Walking Liberty Half in 65. A little bit of a better date. It's probably double what most common dates go for. And last but not least, we're going to show you guys the rest of the stuff that we picked up at the show. So we bought a few 1921 Morgans, which is kind of, you know, the common things that you might normally see out of us. We're trying not to buy everything that's high dollar. We're trying to buy some things that somebody that's moving into the space might want to pick up. We do have this really nice Carson City in VF20. It's a 92, which is something I don't see a bunch. You know, I see 82, 83, 84. Sometimes you see 91s, but 92s are a little bit tough to find. So I thought that one had a really nice look to it. It was nice and original, just like this 1904S in VF20. This one's a little bit of a tougher date also. And you got to have that nice look to it as well. Then we have a few other Franklins here. It's 1949D and 64 FBL. In case you ended up picking up this coin, which is really cool, with that $500 bill, um, just from two different places, but this one's really nice. It's a 1894 $10 gold lib and 62 CAC OGH holder. Nice looking color also. But I appreciate you guys taking a look at all the coins that we wanted to share with you guys today. If you guys want to check them out, you know where to go.